Well, joining me now is Montana Senator John Tester, the ranking Democrat on Senate Veteran Affair, Veterans Affairs Committee. Senator Tester, welcome to the show. Um, let me ask you, you have been the point person for these allegations. Um, some of these are so troubling, it's no longer a question of whether he's qualified to be a VA secretary. These are questions are, are going to be about whether he still has a medical license if these allegations are true about opioids, writing his own prescriptions. How are you verifying all of these allegations? Well, the, the fact is, is that we've, we got, uh, starting about a week ago, Chuck, we've got uh, claims, accusations that were made, and we're following up, talking to uh, some 23 different people, and there's more that come forth uh, every day uh, about some of the challenges that uh, Admiral Jackson had as chief of the White House Medical Unit. Uh, and, and we're following up with them. The reason that document was released is I talked to Chairman Isaacson's staff this morning, my staff did, and gave him a document that was pretty well scrubbed uh, because we don't want to give away the allegations. These are active service member or retired service members, right. and they're very concerned about uh, the ability to maintain uh, to their, their ability to work in the White House medical unit. So uh, once we gave it to them, then we gave it to other people, and look, uh, you guys need to have it too. Well, I, I, I guess that's my question. Are, are you comfortable that all of these allegations are true enough that they belong in the public arena yet? Or do you think some of these need to be run down and investigated before and, and corroborated before you release it to the public? Well, I, I, the question is, is how do you corroborate? Is it only corroborated with people coming out and saying, yep, I'm the one that reported this, I saw it? Uh, I think what we've seen is a pattern uh, of, uh, of problems. Uh, that uh, people deserve to know. I know a lot of folks uh, have said, mainly from the White House, is that, you know, we shouldn't be doing this. Look, it would be senatorial malpractice for, right. not, for us not to follow up on this issue and find out what kind of a person Ronnie Jackson is. And, you know, Chuck, I've never done this before. I don't know. I just want to get the best person to run the VA as possible because our veterans deserve that. And if a guy comes into the VA secretary right. position with a bunch of baggage, it's going to limit his ability to do the job that's necessary to make the V all it can be for our, our uh, retired service members. These folks that have reached out to you and your staff and the committee, when you've spoken with them, has it always been with you? Have you had Senator Isaacs and staff? I mean, I, has it been together? Have you been hearing these allegations? No. Okay. Uh, look, mo most of the work has been done by my staff. Uh, I've had the opportunity to visit with some, uh, but certainly the majority has been done by the staff, uh, both sides. And how much has your staff been working with Senator Isaacson? So you, when these folks come in to, to tell you their story, is it both your staff and Senator Isaacson's staff receiving this information mm -hmm. together? Not always, not always. Okay. But we've tried, to, we've, the information we've got, we've tried to share with Chairman Isaacson's staff as quickly as we possibly can. I, I really don't want there to be a lot of secrets out there. Johnny is a good guy. He's a great person to work with. I do not want to ruin that relationship in the least. Uh, and this, these aren't my accusations. These are accusations by active and retired military personnel that have come to us. We're just trying to follow up to make sure what's true and what's not. Um, as you heard right before we began our interview, Dr. Jackson is denying um, the most recent allegations that have been put out there, particularly about um, being involved in a car wreck, let alone drunk driving. Are you, are you at all concerned that you may have made public something that isn't true if it turns out not to be true? Well, I mean, I, I, first of all, I think that it, it's our obligation to, to come forth and be as straight up and as square with the American people and with Dr. Jackson as we possibly can. Look, if he were to admit to that, he'd be done as Secretary of the VA. So I don't anticipate that he would. Uh, on the other side of the coin, am I 100% rock solid sure that he did this? No, but I've seen a pattern here that continues on and on and on, and I think it's important that members of the committee see what, the, what I'm seeing, yeah. and consequently, once some members see it, they're going to start talking to you, and you guys are going to say, what the heck's going on? So we do what we do in my office, and that is be as transparent as we possibly can. It's what I've done since I got here back in 2007. All right, let's, uh, what's a way forward here? Do you think this needs to be aired out in a confirmation hearing, or do you think the White House should withdraw the nomination? No, I think we, I think we need to get to the bottom of it. I, I'm still not confident that, that, uh, that uh, Admiral Jackson is not confirmable on these grounds. I think we need to get to the facts you as much as possible. You still think he could be that, confirmable? 
Oh, I think there's a possibility he could be confirmable. Now, he has some other issues other than these issues that I think both sides of the aisle are concerned about, about budget, his ability to budget such a massive budget as the VA and, and, and his ability to, to lead. But some of these allegations go directly to his ability to lead. And, and quite frankly, that, that's why we need to get to the facts. Let me ask you a question about whether uh, Dr. Jackson's been the subject of an IG report. Uh, it's our understanding Dr. Jackson said he was not. Um, it, it, did he deny being a subject of an IG report to you, Senator Tester? He, he has not denied it to me, but I have seen parts of that IG report. I've been very, very busy today, so I haven't been able to read through it all. Uh, but he was absolutely a subject of an IG report, him and his predecessor. So, and that, I've seen some of those allegations. Uh, it's my understanding that people said it was more about his predecessor than him. Is that a fair reading of that IG report, or is it pretty damning um, on him as well? I think it's, I think it's equally damning on both of them. Uh, very quickly on this confirmation, on the confirmation issues as a whole. You're not voting for Mike Pompeo. You didn't vote for him for CIA, so no one can say, hey, you're, you're, you said yes to him at one time, no on the other. But what is your line of deference to the president? Uh, because... If Mike Pompeo didn't get confirmed, I don't think Donald Trump's going to nominate a John Kerry, for instance. So what is your line there on deference yeah. to, to, to um, not consenting? Well, look, I, I had a good meeting with, uh, with uh, Director Pompeo, uh, and then I went back and read some of the things that he said in the past. And I, I'm going to tell you, this is a guy as Secretary of State. His job is to negotiate our way forward so we don't end up in war. Uh, war's always got to be a tool out there that you use in negotiations. Uh, I got to tell you, his past comments that he's made have been very troubling to me, and and I think that it, it, that that peace and negotiations aren't his first option. We've been at war for 17 years. This this country is strapped because of it, and and nonetheless, I think it has to be a threat out there. But you need to have a person in the Secretary of State's office that's yeah. willing to negotiate good faith for peaceful altern alternatives uh, in, in in crisis situation. And gosh knows we've got a lot of them around the country. There's a lot of things out there cooking. Very qu quickly, I want to circle back, Dr. Jackson. He's still confirmable in your eyes if he if he answers these allegations to your satisfaction. I, I think he's still, I think there's still a potential of a confirmation hearing and a vote. Okay. You said a hearing and a vote. That doesn't mean you, know, you got the big Cheshire cat smile I, on there. I, I, is there I, any I, chance Chuck, you would vote to confirm him to be VA secretary? You, Senator John Tester? I'm not there yet. Uh, we still have more work to do with the allegations that have been put forth in the claims and uh, more scrutiny on his ability to handle a budget as big as All the right. VA's budget and the people under him. Senator John Tester, Democrat from Montana, uh, ranking member of the VA committee. Thanks for uh, coming on. Appreciate it. Uh, coming Thank on, sharing you, your views. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.